As Mother's Day is celebrated this Sunday, a special Mother's Day service will take place in Grafton. Grafton is located in Taylor County, and it's where Mother's Day began a hundred years ago. Emily Corio has more on the West Virginia connection to Mother's Day and how the person who started it all later lamented what the holiday turned into. Century-old stained glass and huge murals still decorate the chapel walls where the first Mother's Day service was held a hundred years ago. The International Mother's Day Shrine looks like a traditional church because it was for decades. One of its members was Anne Reeves Jarvis. She's the mother who inspired Mother's Day. Ann Reeves Jarvis was uh, actually the assistant superintendent of the primary department of the church school. And uh, she also worked uh, to bring the mothers together into mothers work groups to help improve sanitary conditions in the community, to improve the health uh, and to reduce infant mortality in the area. She died in 1905. Her daughter Anna Jarvis uh, declared when her mother died that she would create a day to honor all mothers in an effort to honor her own mother. In this room we have the resolution that President Wilson signed on May 8, 1914, making Mother's Day the legal holiday that we celebrate today. Now remember, we celebrated Mother's Day many, many times before that, even dating back to the Greek days. But it was not official and that's why Anna Jarvis is um, given the distinction of starting Mother's Day, even though other people did try to do that and did things to do that. Uh, but she got the resolution passed in Congress. Anna Jarvis was born here in 1864. Now the home is a museum open for tours. In 1994, my husband and I were traveling through here and we saw the house in shambles. And we were really distraught over that because of the fact that it was such a significant and important thing for the state of West Virginia and Taylor County. So we met a lady by the name of Ocean Pearl Felton and she offered the house to us and we accepted it, and so in 1994, uh, they decided to give us the house on Mother's Day. So we stood out there on the front porch and we accepted the keys, and we started the restoration project, which took us two years, and Thunder on the Taggart Foundation, a nonprofit organization, is the owner of the properties, and we just work here as volunteers. The 19th century farmhouse in Taylor County looks authentic, down to the floral wallpaper, the black and white pictures of the Jarvis family, and the many antiques that belonged to Anna Jarvis. But we have so many of her wonderful things. She sent postcards to people all the time. So this is one that was sent to a lady in Grafton in 1916, reminding them about Mother's Day. But if you'll look on everything that Anna Jarvis had made for Mother's Day, it never says Happy Mother's Day. It only says Mother's Day. Anna Jarvis wanted Mother's Day to be simple but meaningful. She wanted sons and daughters to write letters to their mothers, not to sign their name at the bottom of a greeting card. She wanted mothers to rest on this holiday. So Jarvis was upset when she saw flowers, greeting cards, and candy become focal points of the holiday. She was going door to door getting a petition signed to rescind Mother's Day because of the commercialization of it. She didn't want it to be a holiday any longer. She figured it was just going to go even more commercialized in the future. And she was quickly placed in the Marshall Square Sanitarium outside of Westchester, Pennsylvania, where she ended up dying on November the 24th, 1948. The people that actually paid her bill at the sanitarium was actually the Card and Flores people. So our assumption is that they put her there to keep her quiet because Anna Jarvis would never give up on a project until it was complete. Anna Jarvis never married and she didn't have any children of her own, but she is considered the mother of Mother's Day, and Grafton celebrates that for the 100th time this year. For Outlook, I'm Emily Corio.